Ben Wittes. He's an MSNBC legal analyst, editor-in-chief of, of Lawfare. He's also a friend of former FBI Director James Comey and certainly has had his share of memorialized memos to deal with um, back in the day. Okay, let's go back to this period. How aware were you at the time of this, I guess the picture that's painted by the New York Times is of a chaotic, unclear picture, Rosenstein, McCabe going, what the heck just happened to Comey? How chaotic was it? Well, so, um, you know, obviously Comey wasn't there anymore. Right. So, um, but the, look, there was clearly a period of significant chaos, and the Times has reported on that before. And uh, it culminated uh, in the appointment of Mueller, but it didn't go away because there was no FBI director. There was an FBI acting director whom the president clearly hated, oh, right? Had, and had character assassinated via Twitter exactly. for months. And who, you know, we now know he was on the phone with asking how it felt to have a wife who was a loser, remember? Yes. Um, and so there was... Uh, a lot of signs that this was a very chaotic period at justice and at uh, and at and at FBI. Um, I, you know, I think that this is an ex sort of extreme example of it. But there are it's not the first uh, story okay. to come out about this period. Timing is everything. OK, the timing of this. This is literally in this week. The president has wanted to declassify these FISA applications, which clearly has gotten um, gotten the United States crosswise right now with some of the our key, um, the five eyes. Yeah, that would have allies. been a big story, by the any way, other, any if, other, if, if in this any hadn't other happened today. Um, but he also wanted to release all these text messages of Comey, Strzok, Page, uh, McCabe, all of his favorite, sort of the greatest hits of his Twitter feed. Um, and then, lo and behold, here's this. I mean, as George Will put it, you look at a story like this and you're like, all right, who benefits? And, 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 and it gets to motive. Right. Where are you on this? So, I, short answer, I don't know. Um, but I do think... Who stands to benefit? Well, I do think that, you know, I, I noticed that, that Andy McCabe's lawyers have been assiduous in saying that he had nothing to do with this and that they had nothing to do with this. But they confirm the... But they're essentially confirming the content. I do think that, uh, you know, if you are... Andy McCabe, and I, I'm not making any accusations. Yeah, I understand. But I do think if you're uh, if you're uh, Andy McCabe and you are under investigation for uh, false statements, has he, has he been brought before the grand jury yet? I, I do not know the. We know that, that one got impaneled. Well, we we know that there is a there is an investigation of the matter, um, and I I think you know having there be a record out there of the. Uh, activity that was going on in that period does stand to make any possible prosecution look like uh, political retaliation. Now, that is not saying that Andy McCabe or his lawyer is responsible is whether, for this. But he would benefit, perhaps, on uh, sure. that front. I also think that anybody, so um, among the list of thing, people who would benefit, anybody who really dislikes Rod Rosenstein right. and wants, and Rod is not the most popular guy in, in the building right now. Um, anybody, Left or right, right? And, exactly. Career or political. So anybody yeah. who really wants to make Rod Rosenstein look bad at a perilous moment where the president really wants to get rid of him, really wants to get rid of uh, the attorney general, this is a great way to do it. Doesn't the president have cause? Of course. I mean, he's been looking for cause that well, doesn't look like so wait, he's uh, trying to cover up. I mean, has he not been handed cause? No, no. Cause is the wrong is the wrong concept here. Uh -huh. uh, the the deputy attorney general serves at the pleasure of the president. Uh, he doesn't need cause, as as Rod Rosenstein himself has right. made clear about you know about Jim Comey. Uh, uh, he can be dismissed any time for any reason or for no reason. The amazing thing, given how much the president hates him is and you know says it right. uh, is that he's still there at all so I, I mean does this provide a basis if if the president wants to get rid of rod rosenstein for doing so sure on the other hand the president had an adequate basis in his own mind yesterday uh, so i'm not really sure other than perhaps providing a public text for it what it changes well actually though let me flip the question this way what if he doesn't what message does that send? It almost allows for insubordination like this. It's he's okay if people are 
plotting behind his back? I mean, says, I know it, it, it does send a different message. It no? sends exactly the same message as it sends when Bob Woodward publishes a, an account of Jim Mattis getting off the phone with the president, getting a direct order mm -hmm. about how to, what to do in Syria and saying to his staff, we're not going to do any of that. Um, it sends the message that the president uh, can be not listened to. And this president has said that message. He talks tough, but in fact, he tolerates uh, a kind of insubordination that none of his predecessors tolerated. You know, one thing that gets lost here is the investigation itself. I've always said, why, are every, why is everybody acting in a way that you say, shouldn't you stay in your lane? Shouldn't you follow the process? that ultimately it's because they're alarmed at what the substance of the investigation is finding. Is that the issue here? I, I'm sure it is. I mean, if you were unafraid of the substance of the Mueller investigation, why on earth would you be spending time on this? Right. Why, why wouldn't you say what, in fact, they said at the beginning of the Mueller investigation, which is, uh, you know, happy to have this investigated. We're going to cooperate in every way we can. And, and, you know, whatever they need, we're going to give them. If you're Bob Mueller today. How are you feeling about the future of your probe? Um, I think if you're Bob Mueller, you've been taking it one day at a time for a long time. And there are uh, ups and downs. And today's a weird one and you're going to keep doing your job until somebody makes you stop. Ben Wittes, um, like I said, you have your own familiarity with memorialized memos that get leaked and things like this. I, actually, no, I had nothing to do. Uh, no, I know you didn't, but you end up having I, to be the explainer. I, I suppose I did some explaining, yes. but I was not the were, channel. I know you were not the channel, Any but you were. contents were. That I'm aware of, but you are, <laughs> you've been our, our narrator, our, our explainer, which is nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. It's a compliment, Ben. I'm proud of it. Fair enough. All right, Ben Wittes is always, sir, thank you. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.